does this mean that you won't be doing loads of online stuff? So while you're touring? Possibly. It's Pride Month and to celebrate, we're going beneath the sequins of the drag world with four very different but equally iconic drag artists. I'm Waishu Black, and today I'm joined by the alien queen, the internet sensation. Yes, that is happening. It's Juno Birch. Hi, I am currently in the Bahamas on holiday. I just thought I would um, go onto this computer and chat with you, my absolute stunning darling. Just got out of the ocean. Oh. A, a lovely dip and sea. Like um, a mermaid. A gorgeous and stunning transsexual mermaid. Ariel could never. No, she could not. She could not. <laughs> <laughs> when I, was the last time I seen you? At Mother's Meeting and you were performing at Eden. Yeah, um, I remember. When nobody was allowed to clap. Yes, when no one was allowed to clap. Which is great because I didn't have to clap at your performances. So I was really <laughs> having a great time. So are you ready to talk about all things drag? Oh, yes, absolutely. This is Under the Wing. So, Juno Birch, my lovely darling. Now, I know you, and I think loads of people know you, but just for the viewers who don't, <laughs> I don't know where oh, they've been darling. hiding under a rock, can you describe your drag for us? A confused alien being that has fallen down onto the earth and I have been trying to disguise myself among the human race for quite some time, but my disguise has remained as a, um, a bit of a clumsy Muppet. That's how I would describe myself. That's how you describe yourself. Oh, I am, I am the Mr. Bean of drag. Okay, I can see that, to be fair. I've seen your performances. I will, I do agree. I do agree. Oh, my goodness me. <laughs> Shady little bitch. We're sisters. It's family. It's family, <laughs> Don't darling. Don't worry. I'll get you next time I'm in Birmingham. Oh, oh God. No, you will. Oh, bloody hell. You said you can, the fans after me. <laughs> you can buy me a round of drinks. Let's not go that far, do you know? <laughs> you get a tap water and some squash. <laughs> <laughs> so the character... The alien housewife. Where did it all come from? Where did it begin? Well, I think I've, I've been drawing and doing like sculptures and shit like that for so many years. And I've just kind of always drawn this alien woman character with like giant boobs and a big arse and a tiny waist. And I love the idea of just having this alien um, shopping and not have a clue what she's doing. I just love clumsy drag. So I think that like, I've just kind of slowly took on the role of what I was drawing for all those years. Mm. And when I'm in drag, it's just like a, a, a more excited version of myself because I'm just, I feel like 100% me. Drag, it just sort of like, it amplifies everything, doesn't it? And I'm, Yeah, it wakes you up. Yeah, absolutely. And you get away with a lot more. I get away with murder. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you do too. <laughs> oh, yes. I can demand what I want and drag. Ooh, that's why I'm going to always be behind you, Juno, every step of the way. Oh. I'll have what she's having. <laughs> <laughs> How were the early years for you in Manchester, dragging up and doing the most with the least? I think I just started, like, just throwing on, like, a wig and painting myself blue and just going to the club. It was just nice to be dressed the way, exactly the way I want to be in a community of people that doesn't give a shit and, and just be fabulous and get drunk. And that's kind of what I was doing for so many years. And then I think I realised that performing was, like, the thing that I just wanted to focus on the most. I absolutely love performing so much. And then to get booked in, like, another city than other than Manchester was like, oh my God, amazing. Mm. I wish I'd I'd seen that because I wasn't there that day. Um, you know, why is she not here? I get the joke all the time. <laughs> why, is she, why is she bothering? <laughs> why is she bothering? Why is she late? Why is she here? Yeah. Wide shoe black. <laughs> Wide shoe black, you cheeky. I love you, Birch. <laughs> I remember when me, me, you and Ginny were in a in the dressing room and you were coming and you were like, I don't know why my shoes are so wide. Why have I got to wear these wide shoes? And Ginny was just like, wide shoe black is the name. Welcome to yeah, the I remember it. 
in this very room. I've still got oh, a video. Are you there now? <laughs> yes, I'm there now. Look at me in the background of the wigs. I'm here in the village in Birmingham. In the village in yeah. Birmingham. So I want to know, so were there any struggles with you like performing or were you just straight off the bat like they've let you in, no hurdles, nothing, just like boom, 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 boom. Or was it like a steady, gradual sort of thing? Well, I think the, the very first performance that I did ever in Manchester was at um, a night called Creatures of Catharsis, mm. which is most by Grace Omi Smith and Bo and they are so empowering as like trans people to just sort of put on this show for like so many such a big queer audience mm. and I remember Laurie she was like asking if I would perform and I was just like absolutely and then my first performance was like this Avon lady number where I just drew lipstick all over me and there's like loads of Jennifer Coolidge stuff in there and, and it just went down really well and people seem to really love it and then I think I started performing at Albert Schloss after that. I love your performance Gina there are just times where I'd watch you before. I, I think I watched you do Jingle Bells once <laughs> and I was just a howling. I was absolutely fucking shit-faced when I just <laughs> I was so drunk. Because I think I'd just got back from like, I think I was in America somewhere and I got back and I was just like haggard and I was like, I'm going to do this gig and then I was just like chugging all the Proseccos. And yeah. Then, yeah. <laughs> but the, the good thing was the number was supposed to be drunk. Yeah, so I didn't really have to act. Oh, so well, it was perfect because your limbs were everywhere, and I was like, <laughs> "Wow, she's such a great performer. God, she's so talented." You know, <laughs> you're just drunk. Yeah. <laughs> I realise this thing that when I perform, I do like him. Um, I really like this all the time. Yes, you do. <laughs> And I don't, I don't really notice I'm doing it. And then when I see all the photos from the night, I've literally just got no teeth. Like, <laughs> we need to frame that and package that and sell it. You know what I mean? Just you, those photos. Do you have any signature things that you do when you perform? Yes, sweat. Oh yes, oh, yes. yes, sweat. I'm <laughs> the Latrice Royale of uh, Birmingham <laughs> slash the United Kingdom. I can walk from the stage to the bar and sweat. <laughs> it's, honestly, it's a talent. It's a gift. Oh, gorgeous. And, uh, so, the early days of performance, hanging around with little old me and the girls and in Manchester. And then Vogue came into the picture. Yes. Uh, yes. A Vogue came in. Now, I need to know how this started because you went from local icon to worldwide icon superstar, <laughs> like over a couple of nights. Uh, and oh, I'm thinking it was, it that? was that like a year ago or two years? Two years, must well, have been. two years ago, two years ago, yeah, something like that. Yeah, well, you were um, in it, you should know. <laughs> I don't remember anything past yesterday, darling. I oh. it evaporates out of my brain. Um, but the Vogue thing, they just emailed me and said, We would like to come to your house and we would like to film you doing your makeup. And if at first, I, I replied and I said, um, how much is the pay? And they were like, unfortunately, it's not paid, but there's a big exposure. And I was like, well, um, I don't want to do it then. Thank you. <laughs> and I said no. And then they kept emailing me and, and saying that would be quick and we would do it in house. And then we could even do a bit, whatever you want to do in the supermarket. Because I wasn't much of like makeup tutorial kind of person. But then they said that we, we want to do like a little video of you in like Tesco's with a shopping trolley and drag. So I was like, OK, I, I, I want to do that. That's fun. I love the fact that you turned down clothes. Yes. I love it. Because we're I don't so care happy. how much exposure I get. Yeah, I want the money. So <laughs> How did all of that change your life, Miss Thing? Well, I'm going to be completely honest. It didn't change anything, really. When the Vogue video came out, it kind of, a lot of people seen it and whatnot, but it didn't really, I didn't really notice much difference in in what I was doing on, on social media or anything like that. And then I think when I went to LA and I did a video with Trixie, Trixie shared the Vogue video and was like talking about and stuff. So um, I think that, that after I came back from LA, I think that's when a lot more people were sort of noticing me online on the social media. Yeah, yes. yeah, because you were really tuned in. You were with Trixie and then you met Jennifer Coolidge. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, that was that was heart pounds when you mention it. 
That was a stunt and a half. Oh. I was like gagged and gooped. I still can't believe that. Did that you do the impression for her? Yes. Well, she's seen it loads of times already okay. online. I think what happened was I went to London because she was doing like a pie shop thing, mm-hmm. like a special guest appearance. And I went down in drag and then she spotted me. And then um, she turned and just went, oh, I loved your impersonation of me. And I just like was like, you know who I am. Oh my! And then it just kind of went from there, and then we just talked, and then hung out in LA, which was just <laughs> what the um, hell? That's crazy! That's a whirlwind. That's a whirlwind. little old working class me from Frodsham going off to LA and eating oysters. <laughs> it was oh. just bizarre. <laughs> I want to know, why do you think you're one of the ones that made it online? Because I do things online, but uh, I ain't no Juno Birch. <laughs> it's the sweat, darling. It's the sweat. It is, yeah, no. <laughs> that out. I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I think I just do my own thing and I just don't really care. I, I tried to kind of think about it and I think sometimes maybe it's because sometimes people feel more relaxed when somebody is just kind of like, not giving yeah. a fuck kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know. It's very, it's very UK drag, isn't it? We're we're yeah. all we're all bastards. Um, yeah, bastard very, drag. <laughs> yeah, very bastard drag. Very that. For those who don't know, being a bastard is where you you may not look the best, but you've got great personality, very funny, very entertaining, and that's why I am a bastard. Do you know about <laughs> one of the bastard? Uh, probably still is in personality. Bailey Mills, bastard. Ginny oh, Levin. Yeah. Bastard, and the list continues. <laughs> <laughs> I did a show the other day with Bailey J Mills. I know, oh my God, she's such a good performer. A real, and a real star. Just, like unreal. She's so good. Mm. Now, is there any difference between online Juno and offline Juno? Yes, I am an absolute fucking nightmare to live with. <laughs> Um, I do admit I am very dramatic mm. Um, mm. and I do have major panics and diva moments at home over the smallest things. But I don't really do that online because I try and contain myself a little bit when I'm on mm-hmm. video and things. Mm-hmm. I'm a worrier and I'm also, oh. a, um, I, I, I get a bit giddy and oh, I, yeah. I need to calm down. <laughs> I don't know how Phil copes with me. Honestly, I don't know how he copes with that. I, I've been before. wondering myself, to be fair. I've been wondering myself. Now, we need to discuss your catchphrases because there's been a few, a.k.a. Yes, that's happening. Uh, stunning. And they've taken, like, a life of their own. Like, was it deliberate or was it accident that these just happened? Absolute accident. Because I I think the stunning thing has been going on for ages now. Uh, That was the reason that happened was because when I did that Vogue video, I was a little bit nervous because I had, like, 15 people in my tiny little flat and I had to, like, talk on camera. And I'd not done YouTube videos yet, so I wasn't used to talking on camera. So every time I didn't really know what to say, I was just like... Stunning, stunning. And I just kept saying it. And the crew were like constantly taking the piss because I just kept repeating the same word over again. And then in the edit, they were like, we're just going to go with it and we're just going to put as many stunnings in as we can. Mm -hmm. And I think after that, everybody just was like, this is all that she says. (laughs) I think, yes, that's happening is something I've kind of always said, um, even out of drag. Like, I feel a bit like if I'm not in control of what I'm doing and people are telling me what to do, I just have to, like, switch off and go, yes, that's happening. Just let it happen. Just yeah. go with the flow yeah. and don't yeah. worry. And that's kind of what I've always said. And then it's kind of... Yeah. Just... Do, do people shout at you in the street? That Are they like, yes, that's happening! Stunning! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. But it's nice, you know, when you just pop yeah. into boots and you walk out the house and someone calls you stunning. Yeah. And you're like, yes, I know. Thank you very much. So I'm proud of you, Miss Juno Bert. Oh, I'm very I'm proud good. of you because you have a world tour coming up soon. Yes, I and do. I do. This is honestly, you? if somebody said to me, what is your goal in life? Mm-hmm. It is do like a world tour. Don't get me wrong. I'm really excited that you got licorice black to go with you. But I think you got the wrong black. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Who? Yeah. So next time... You can have the why she black. Just go through the colours. That's fine. Yeah. I'm here. Or you could just I'm put here. you at the bottom and put why is she here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just following along. I'll, I'll have the drinks on tap. 
Um, <laughs> is there any place that you're really excited to go to? Um, well, so the tour is called Attack of the Stunning. And I'm going to be invading all the cities around the world. In April 2022, we're doing the UK. Mm-hmm. In May 2022, we're going to Australia, which I'm really, really excited about. Mm -hmm. And then in June 2022, we're doing all of the US. But the dates for the US are being announced at the end of this month, I think. Because a lot of people have been messaging me and saying, when, 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 when. End of June this this month, but it's not it's not like I've done shows here and there all the time. But this is yeah. this is a special thing. This is like a show that we've put together and written. Oh, oh, and that's amazing! That's amazing. Well, I'm very excited. But does it does this mean that you won't be doing loads of online stuff? So while you're touring, possibly. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, you might notice I've not done a YouTube video in ages. Yeah, I was thinking that as well, and I was like, yeah. you booked it's, a movie. It's for a few reasons. Number one. Mm-hmm. I'm an absolute diva and it is just too hot in this room. Number okay. three, I'm performing on stage, so I need to prepare for all that kind of stuff. And there's other things going on that I can't talk about yet, but that I've been working on that. But I do want to get back to playing Sims. I really do. I just yeah. need to find a bit of time. Your Sims um, really took off, like really took off. Did you ever think it would like go that big? No, <laughs> Honestly, I was so bored in lockdown and I was like, I play The Sims anyway, like Mm. in my spare time. I haven't played it in ages though because I've not had the time. But like, I thought, why not get in drag, play The Sims and then we can actually be productive and play games as well. Kind of, there's this weird cult following for like, Sims too. It's it's just bizarre. I think you just turn anything into gold, Miss Juno Birch. I think that's oh, what it thank is. You. Let's talk a bit about you know drag in the wider community. I think it's important just drag being sort of a symbol. Um, I think being as big and glamorous and representing everything queer. Do you feel the same way that like we need lots of drag in these spaces? Mm. Uh, the fucking lately and there needs to be more oh, this is an obvious thing but there needs to be more um representation of mm. of drag because mm. like I, I don't want to say all kinds of drag because it, it's it's not kinds of drag it all is drag also i just think that sometimes when you just when you just have fun and people who young queer people can see what you're doing and you're just enjoying yourself and you're being who you want to be and they can see that you are allowed to do that mm-hmm. it kind of gives them a little bit of hope yeah. from my experience as a child yeah. looking up at queer people I think that's mm. what I think anyway absolutely I agree I agree well as you know Juno the gay agenda states that we must recruit as many young and impressionable people as possible so In 30 seconds, can you tell us and the viewers at home why they should start drag? Um, You should start drag because you must treat yourself and tell yourself that you're absolutely stunning. And in the words of Frankenfurter, don't be it, dream it. No. Don't dream it, be it. (laughs) (sighs) I can't do this. We're done, we're finished. I'm done. <laughs> Don't do drag. Don't do drag. It's shit. Don't do it. There's another one. <laughs> <laughs> if you do drag, you'll end up in the same space as Juno Birch out of Shadow Fruit Seccos, and then, well, yeah. anything's you know, <laughs> make you reevaluate your life at least four times. <laughs> At least. <laughs> well, oh, my God. dear, it has been so lovely chatting to you. I ask this question to everyone, but I'm sure they all know where to find you. But in case they don't, plug yourself, plug yourself, baby. You know, bitch, on the internet. <laughs> This is it. Google, so open up Google and type Juno Birch. Done. Now type in the most stunning drag queen on the earth. And it should appear. So, and if it doesn't, I'll have to have words with Wikipedia. Have you got a Wikipedia page? Yes. Well, right. I'll tell you a funny story. I was out in London the other day mm. and I wanted to go to heaven because I've never been to heaven before. Mm. And um, I got to the door and she asked for my ID. And I said, I'm so sorry, but I don't have any ID. And I was in full drag. And then she was like, well, you can't come in then. And I went on my phone and I said, let me get up my Wikipedia page, bitch. And I got up my Wikipedia page and I zoomed in on my birthday on the web page and went, here you go, bitch. (laughs) (laughs) And then she let you in, yeah. 
Yeah. Like proper diva moments. Not but then the I went straight back out because it was awful. Oh. <laughs> we got sat right at the very back of this big hall mm. and it was pitch black. And it there was just the tables were sticky, and I was like, I, you know, right. And well, let's go somewhere else. Let's go to the cock ball. Oh, okay. I love the cock ball. I'm sure, I've had. I've heard you have, Juno. I've heard you. <laughs> well, thank you so much for chatting to us under the wig. It's been so lovely to see you. I've missed you so much. I've um, missed I can't you. Wait. I can't I'm going to give you a big kiss when I next see you. Oh, absolutely. You've got your brunches coming up, haven't you? So I'm yeah. going to come to one of those. Before I go, I want. Mm -hmm that even though we've got the tour happening next year of Attack of the Stunning, me and Licorice Black are doing a special cabaret show in Manchester, debuting some of the um, performances that are going to be in the tour on the 10th of October. And it is called Absolutely Completely Normal Cabaret at the Deaf Institute. <sighs> I'm there. I'm ready. Yay! Save me a seat. It can be at the back. It's fine. We'll put you in the cheap seats. In the cheap seats. As long as it's kind of close to the bar, I'm happy. I I'm think good. it's standing, actually. So, oh, um, oh you the bar. <laughs> You cheeky devil. Well, I thank know. you so much, Juno Birch. I love you. I can't I wait love to you. see you. And I can't wait to pester you and annoy you for the rest of your life. I can't wait. I'm ready, my darling. Yes, I am. Yes, that is happening. Yes, it's happening. Thank you so much. I love you. Take care. I Goodbye, love you, my darling. Bye.